Seasick pills work really well. <laughs> we begin this massive adventure on British Airways' longest direct flight from London Heathrow Airport to Santiago in Chile. At nearly 15 hours long and over 11,600 kilometres, we decided to indulge ourselves with a bit of extra legroom and opted for the premium economy in BA's lovely Boeing 7879 Dreamliner. The aircraft was only six years old, so my confidence levels were high. Old airplanes really aren't my thing. The flight was due to take off at 10.15pm, but we were half an hour late setting off, giving us a little bit of anxiety as we had a really short layover at Santiago Airport. The flight actually only lasted 13 hours and 50 minutes, and we landed 20 minutes ahead of schedule at 9.39am, chilly time. Yay! We have a full review of this flight to look out for that one, so we'll skip over it because this trip is so packed with incredible things we need to crack on, and we fast forward to yet another flight, this time from Santiago to Punta Arenas, the city in southern Chile where we will begin our adventure properly. We flew this time with LATAM Airlines, the largest airline in South America. Despite the flight only taking around three hours, we flew on a 787 Dreamliner again, usually a long-haul plane. The business class was only about £50 more, so we opted for that and were surprised that we got these full lay-flat seats and tons of room. The flight, entirely directly over the Andes mountain range, was not surprisingly a little bit bumpy. We enjoy the big seat experience though, even if business class in this context wasn't really business class in terms of food and drink. Given the bumpy ride, I was dying for a large G&T as well. Oh well, forget the dodgy lager for a moment and check out this view of the southern Patagonian ice field. Nothing like it I've ever seen before, and worth the airfare on its own. The ice field is 220 miles long and features some of the largest glaciers in the world. We were lucky enough to have clear skies. We arrived into Punta Arenas on time, collected our baggage and headed out to get a taxi to take us to our hotel in town. The half hour ride took us into the city centre and when we pulled up outside the hotel, Capo de Hornos, first impressions definitely blew away our rather muted expectations. We were also pleasantly surprised by the cost of everything. The half hour taxi ride was only about £10.
in the hotel we checked in for our two night stay and headed up to our room. I think we must have had the best room in the hotel, a corner room on the top floor with a view out to sea and over town. Although the room wasn't massive, it had a huge bathroom, was very clean and had some incredible double aspect views, including out to the Strait of Magellan, the huge body of water that the city sits beside. As we had to isolate until we had our test results back from Santiago Airport, we ordered room service and a bottle of red before crashing for the night. Unfortunately, no one had warned us that recently on Friday and Saturday nights in Punta Arenas, the city centre becomes a bit of a racetrack for the locals in then very noisy cars. Think fast and furious, but with less disposable income. No wonder we found the earplugs in the table beside our beds. <laughs> we wondered what they were for. Day one was long and tiring. We'd travelled over eight and a half thousand miles. But with the hotel being lovely, the room service food delicious, the wine very decent and extremely good value, we ended the day on a high. Not a noisy high, yeah, but still a high. Tomorrow the adventure would probably begin and our fellow Antarctica guests would start arriving at the hotel. <laughs> now, where are those earplugs? If you enjoy this video and are interested in knowing more about Aurora Expeditions, our preferred travel partner is Panache Cruises, the elite ocean, expedition, river and yacht style cruising specialists. The team at Panache has decades of combined knowledge and experience in finding the right cruise for you. For a completely personal service, their dedicated cruise connoisseurs will be at your side right from the initial inquiry until you get back from your dream cruise. They will help you with every aspect of your holiday, no question too big, no detail too small. Call them now on this number or visit their beautiful website and make your next bucket list cruise, like the one we've just taken on Greg Mortimer, a reality. Good morning and welcome to day one at Punta Arenas. Hello. We managed to get hello. <laughs> we managed to get to the viewpoint, which. Uh, a bit of a it is a bit of a climb, but we're here, and uh, as you can see, ta -da! It's, uh, it's gorgeous. There's locks all over this uh, viewpoint here. There's, there's guys setting out all stuff to sell. Isn't that lovely? We're now going to try and find the Jane McDonald signpost. Yeah, we're trying to look for the signpost, which is a little bit more tricky. Um, <laughs> we'll but we'll see you there. There isn't many landmarks in Punta Arenas, but I think we found the main one. Yeah, the only one. <laughs> the only one. No, we're going to go to the Punta Arenas sign now, uh, which is on the coast. And we're going to go and walk along the water. So, see you there. So we're here and uh, we've just gone for another walk. We're at the end of the... Well, we're not at the well, end. No, we're not. No, we're still we, going to go on for a little we, while longer. We keep getting to somewhere and, and saying, we'll turn around and go back at that point, but then we see something else. And yeah, say, we do. Oh, let's just go to there. And we're in front of this really good monument, a really lovely monument here, uh, which I think is, uh, celebrates 500 years of something. It's, a, it's called a circumnavigation 
monument and it was part of an October 2020, so re reasonably, oh, went, no. reasonably new, yeah. And we're here with the Viking Jupiter. As you can see, so it's lovely to see the Viking Jupiter in today. We're going to go for another little walk because the weather is so, so good. We've been really, really lucky with the weather today and really blessed that it's just sunny. Uh, it's a light breeze now, which wasn't there this morning, but there's a light breeze. But we're on the coast, so what do you expect, really? Um, it's going to rain this afternoon, apparently, so we... Not we're... until later now. No. Oh, isn't it? No. Not until later. Oh, that's good, because I'll come out a bit later on with my, uh, with my bigger lens and I'll uh, capture some B-roll because it's absolutely amazing. In fact, if you want some B-roll, Here's some now. Okay, we've made it back to the sign, if you can hear us, because there's lots of music. But the cyclists have gone, as you saw in the little bit of film that we did. And uh, we're at the sign, and here we are, Punta Arenas. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Um, oh, there you go. Oh, they're just the people are so lovely here, aren't they? Yeah, we've had so, some so lovely nice. people take a photo of us. We took a photo there. Yeah. They were from Santiago here on holiday, had a lovely chat with them. Chilean people are absolutely the really best nice. people, aren't they? So uh, it's fantastic so far. So we're going to take a few more pictures and go so back to the go hotel walk. for a coffee. Yeah, we might actually walk up that way a yeah. little bit towards the, towards the ship and towards then back the for a coffee. Uh, we'll see you in a little while. Bye. Well, actually, forget the coffee. Take a look at these bad boys. A Pisco Sour, you'll see a lot of these, and a Cosmo made not with cranberry juice, but Calafati berries an indigenous Patagonian shrub deeply rooted in Patagonian folklore that you'll hear more of because just about everything living down here loves them. Following those, we had a delicious dinner, as you can see here, and headed down for our very first Aurora get-together, the pre-voyage briefing. So the flights, but well, I'm glad you're here, we are almost there. So tomorrow is the day we start the expedition. A plane that can land on gravel, because this is what we are going to find. <laughs> the day. Today is the day where we... It's um, seven o'clock. Yeah. So we've been up and had breakfast already and all packed and ready to go. Um, about to leave our lovely hotel. We've had a lovely time um, and hopefully board a plane to... Yeah, we had our briefing time. last night. We were told what to expect, what not to expect and uh, it looks like it's on. We take off at what? 10.45? 10 o'clock. 10, 10, 10 o'clock, yeah, to arrive we at 11.45. We take off at 10 o'clock to arrive at King George Island at 11.45. And um, let's just pray the weather holds up because it's looking nice at the moment. We've got so many layers on, we're both baking hot. Baking hot, because you've got to get layers got on. Dress then... ready for... Oh my God. We've been warned it will be about one degree, although my weather app says minus three, so somewhere between minus three and one. Minus hopefully. three, yeah, um, toasty. Yeah, so um, <laughs> we're all wrapped up. <clears throat> so, shall we go? Yeah. Let's go.
Well, we're not going to go into too much detail about the flight because we've done a separate video all about it, which I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner now and at the end of this video. Because this was a fly cruise, the flight is included in your Aurora Expeditions fare. Touching down on King George Island was a very special moment. It's obviously not mainland Antarctica, but it gave me the chills nonetheless. <laughs> not because it was cold. The first thing to do was put on our muck boots for the short trek to the Zodiacs. Muck boots are not traditional wellies. They are thickly insulated, extremely sturdy, give you a good grip over wet rocks, are completely waterproof and keep your feet nice and warm. Aurora lend you a pair for your entire voyage, so there's no need to invest in your own pair. We were not allowed to take any pictures of the bases here, but we were allowed to take a selfie with the sign before we headed off to finally join the Greg Mortimer. So here we are, where are you? Are you there? <laughs> we're on King George Island. Isn't it great? Is it great? We have a mile walk to the beach. We have a one mile walk to the beach. And uh, I say it's a beach, there's no beach bar. And there's definitely no sun lounges. And definitely no margaritas. There'll be cocktails waiting on the other side. There'll be cocktails. <laughs> oh yeah, there definitely will be cocktails. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Shana. There's Shana. <laughs> From London. From hey. London. And we've just glimpsed the ship. Glimpsed the ship. I can't show you because it's too far away. Right, okay, I'm gonna sign off until we get on the Zodiacs. Okay, say goodbye. Bye. Zodiacs are rigid inflatable boats that will be our only way to get to shore on this expedition. There are no moorings or ports in Antarctica, so landings are done entirely by these tough little vessels. They might look a bit unsteady, but believe me, they are incredibly stable. Entrance to the ship is by a little door in the side, and given a firm hold onto a trusty sailor in the doorway, we were at last inside MV Greg Mortimer. With all the legal and procedural stuff out of the way, it was time to find out what the chefs were made of. Verdict? A pass with distinction. It had been an exciting day, but we'd only just begun to discover what makes Antarctica so unique and so wonderfully special. Stay tuned for part two, and please watch these companion videos for a more detailed dive into this incredible adventure.